there are elements of the report where Twiggy and I heard him speak um, here at Gama, where he talked about early childhood education, about zero to 40 year olds, they're the most imperative years of children. And totally agree with that. And if you look at what, what's happening now is, is this government, um, when you're talking, there's a lot of budget cuts to education, to early childhood education. So you've got a man who's going out trying to um, talk about this is the solution, but he's going to have to go back to Tony Abbott to talk about there are a significant amount of budget cuts to the area that he wants to say that we should be investing in, and that's at early childhood education. Um, we, what Ken was saying with regards to um, how the in intervention happened, Aboriginal people, and I've spoken to so many people, people came into their communities. They didn't ask to come in, they imposed themselves on Aboriginal people. They said, you need this, you need that. And I've seen communities where they went and built houses on sacred sites. Those, the houses in, in Western Australia and in parts of the Northern Territory, they remain vacant. It's like, because you are black in this country, you can't be good enough to participate. And it's like so long, so many times now, Aboriginal people are just being told and dictated how they will run and how they're going to run their life. And, and we see it far too often. And you can't have a, um, a relationship if you're not going to have everyone walk, working and walking together. I just, want, I just want to hear, yeah, I know you want to respond to that, so go ahead. There's another kind of cue I've seen. It's the queue in front of the ATM machine, in front of the bowls club, where the poker machines are. What do we do about that queue? And the question about intervention, what do we do when the kids aren't getting a feed, they're being neglected? Should we intervene and support that family to make sure there's food in the fridge and they're able to um, tackle their addictions by making sure the rent is paid and the food is in the fridge? Or do we stand back and say, no, we won't intervene and we'll let the child protection authorities intervene later and take the kids away? Which one do we want? To support the family so that the child can stay with mum and dad or stand back and let the child be taken away by the child protection authorities. In Cairns, you drive around the streets, the buses have got advertisements asking for more foster parents, asking people from the public to volunteer as foster parents to take Aboriginal children in. So, you know, it's easy to say we shouldn't intervene and so on, but by us not intervening, that's why our, our children are 3% of the population, but 60% of the kids in child protection, not living with their mothers and fathers.